open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. everybody's here. Hey, let's pray this morning. Let's kick this show off right. Lord, I thank you for this day. God, I thank you for, God, I thank you for who you are. God, I thank you for your grace and your mercy. And Lord, I thank you that we get to gather in a place. Lord, I get, thank you that we get to gather here and worship your name. And Lord, I pray over the service right now, God, I pray that you would be in this place. Lord, I pray that you would speak through Brother Rod in such a mighty and powerful way. God, be with the band. Lead us into worship. And God, I thank you for everything that we have. Lord, it's in your name. Amen. Hey, if this is your first time here, I want to say welcome. And if you can do me a favor, if you can just slip up your hand, and we want to put a card in your hand, and on that card, we want just a little bit of information from you. If you can fill that out during the service, and then after the service, as you're heading out the door, on the left-hand side, we got a welcome booth. And there's going to be some ladies there at the welcome booth. You can exchange that card for a bag. And in that card, there's lots of information about the church. Uh, there's some cookies in there. And we are honored uh, that you're here. But right now, uh, we got Miss Elizabeth. She's going to come up here and she's going to make a, a quick announcement. Good morning, and it is certainly good to be here. And before I tell you what I'm actually up here to tell you, I want to tell you from where I sit and I see and I hear things going on, God is so busy working within our church. I, I told the ladies at Bible study, when a church is without their shepherd, they go one of two ways. They're that flock that just falls off the cliff and goes berserk, or they huddle together and they become stronger in strength. And that's what I'm seeing God doing with our people. 
we are coming together and working as one. Now for what I'm really up here for. First, I have three scholarships for, I think, maybe at second through seventh grade uh, for Sky Ranch. If you have a child in that age bracket and you are interested in them going to Sky Ranch, see me and we'll figure out, we'll have a list, we'll figure out who we can give them to and how we're going to do that this year. But anyway, scholarships to Sky Ranch, the ladies' banquet. If you have never attended our ladies' banquet, we have a glorious time. It's, we laugh, we cry, uh, plan on coming. Uh, Leslie uh, Hilliard will be our speaker this year, and she's going to tell you what God has done in her life. And then, maybe the most important one of all, is we have a VBS meeting this afternoon at 4 o'clock. We were unable to do VBS last year because of COVID. We're going to have some changes. We're going to do some things a little differently. Come this afternoon and have input into how this is going to work this year. But VBS is going to happen, and uh, we need you to be a part of it. Thank you. All right, next up, uh, we got Mr. Don Hatton. He's going to come up here and talk a little bit about the tractor pull. Morning, everybody. <clears throat> As y'all know, we've got our annual tractor pull coming up. This should be our eighth, but due to uh, unforeseen circumstances, I think it may be our sixth. But it's always a great time. Uh, I'm out in the foyer this Sunday and next Sunday trying to hire some volunteers to help us put that event on. We need lots of help. Uh, I have been studying the book of Nehemiah, and Nehemiah, y'all know, y'all remember, he built that wall, rebuilt the wall around Jerusalem and uh, when it was tore down. And there was four, he broke everybody up into four different groups. There was a volunteer group that just jumped in and said, I want to help. And then there was a group of volunteers that said, you know, yeah, I'll come, y'all come on in. And, and they went in and helped. The third group of volunteers was very important. They were the prayer volunteers. And I asked everybody that, that is coming, everybody that's here, to be the, the prayer warriors for this event. You know, we want to we wanna have pretty weather and use the tools that God gave us to, to outreach into the community. But we also want to pray for that one person out there that needs to come to this event to hear the message that, that Trey will bring that day and he'll be led to Jesus Christ. And that's what this is all about, is, is to bringing people to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So again, I, I'll be in the lobby helping sign up volunteers. If you feel led to come out and volunteer, I'll be out there this Sunday and next Sunday, and I would greatly appreciate all your help. It'll just be for a couple of hours that day. You know, we'll kind of break the help up where you don't have to stay all day. Remember, we got events for the kids all day, that too. So bring your kids, your grandkids, the neighbor's kids, the kids down the street. So bring them all out here so we, we can get to know all of them. Thank y'all. All righty, so next Sunday, we got, we're going to keep rolling. Next Sunday is Easter Sunday, and so we got some big, big, big things planned for Easter Sunday. we got sunrise service at 7 o'clock out in the arena. And then after that, we got breakfast, cowboy breakfast that's going to be served out there, some delicious cowboy coffee. Uh, there's going to be an egg hunt at 9, and then we'll be back in here at 10 for our regular service. So y'all make plans to be here next Sunday for Easter Sunday. And then Tuesday, we're going to be roping, so we'll start roping the dummy at 5.30. 6.45 is when our service starts. 6 o'clock is when the kitchen opens up, and then we'll go down there and, and rope after it. On Saturday, we have our jackpot roping. And we need some help doing that, y'all. There's a lot of activities going on for the next couple of months. Uh, every weekend, there's something going on. And so we need lots of volunteers. We need lots of help because, like Mr. Don said, it is all about sharing Jesus. And why not uh, all of us get down there and let's work and do that? Uh, so that's this Saturday. Uh, books opens up at 8.30. We'll start the uh, number 7 at 10. And then the number 9 will not start before 12. Uh, the last couple is in y'all's bulletin. Y'all received the, the 
pastor's questionnaire. It's a front and back sheet. Y'all fill that out. And it, it's just basically, you know, what, what do you want? It, well, I tell you, well, never mind. I won't go there. But uh, I was going to talk about the old catalogs at Christmas time, you know, that y'all used to circle. There's a few of y'all remember those things. I remember. But anyways, so this is the pastor's questionnaire. Y'all take this seriously. Uh, fill these out. They're going to be collecting them as you're heading out the door. Uh, today, the youth are going zip lining. And so uh, if you want to go zip lining, you need to see Miss Colleen. She's the youth uh, pastor. It's meeting up here at 12. They'll be back by 3.30. The cost is $30 to do that. And so make sure if you want to go zip lining and you are youth, make sure you be up here for that. And there's no youth tonight. And then the last thing I have is something that y'all may not know that we do here. It's a service that we offer here. It's called Grief Share. And what Grief Share is, is if you have lost a loved one in your life or you're going through some really hard times, uh, Miss Elizabeth, every Tuesday at 5 o'clock, she meets with you. And see, it's an awesome, awesome, awesome thing. And she's been doing it now for, what did we say the other day? Yeah, since about 2006. And so she's been doing it for a long time. She's walked through some very hard times in her life. And look at her now. And, and she can use her experiences to help you get through uh, what you have. And so on Tuesdays at 5 o'clock, they meet back there in the West Room. And so that's just a service, uh, something else that we offer. But right now, I want you all to get up and shake somebody's hand.
with this next song. Was reading my mail. When he told you you're not good enough. When he told you you're not right. When he told you you're not strong enough to put up a good fight. When he told you you're not worthy, when he told you you're not loved, when he told you you're not beautiful, you'll never be enough. Oh, fear, he is a liar. He will take Stop you in your steps. Fear, he is a liar. He will rob your rest, steal your happiness, cast your fear in the fire. Cause fear. He is a liar. When he told you you were trouble and you'd never be alone. When he told you you should run away, you'll never find a home. When he told you you were dirty and you should be ashamed when he told you you could be the one that grace could never change oh fear he is a liar he can take your breath stop you in your steps Cause fear He is a liar Cause fear He is a liar Let your fire fall And cast out all your fears let your fire fall to love is all I need. Let your fire fall, cast out all my fears. Let your fire fall to love is all I feel. Y'all sing it with me. Let your fire fall and cast out all my fears. Let your fire Let your fire fall till love is all I feel. Oh, fear, he is a liar. He will take your breath, steal your happiness. Oh, fear, he is a liar. He will rob your your happiness has fear into the fire cause fear he is a liar cause fear he is a liar
Because you were forsaken, I'm accepted. You were condemned, and I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me. Because you died and you rose again, and I'm forgiven. Because you were forsaken. Some people may ask, why does that cowboy stand up so much? Why does that cowboy church stand up so much? It's real simple. Jesus stood up for us. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see it was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears really how precious 
did that grace appear in the hour I first believed. Chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed. Secures, and he will my shield and portion me as long as life endures. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior. song Amazing Grace. I tell you some Amazing Grace this morning. Me and Wayne hadn't said a bad word to each other. That's Amazing Grace right there at work, huh? Love you, Wayne. The day is not over. That's right. We're, we have not finished the service yet. So, Just a, a quick couple of announcements, uh, and Trey has done all the announcements. Uh, I want to mention, if, there, if you're a youth here today and you maybe don't have the money to go, ride the zip lines, come find me or Colleen after the service and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get that handled for you. Um, if you're a youth and you participated in the stock show this week, could you stand up? We have a lot of them. It's, it's pretty neat that we have, thank you, we, we have not only youth that participated, but we also have people that did not raise up that were also involved in the stock show, and I thank you for, 
for being involved with our youth here in Henderson County, and I think it's a great support because it's amazing when, when you give a child or a young youth a project to do or whether it's building something or taking care of an animal, it gives them responsibility and it teaches them something. And I think this day and time that we need to be teaching our young a work ethic. And that's one way that we can teach our children a work ethic. So thank you all for being involved in that. Um, and yesterday we done something a little different here at the church. It was just kind of almost a spur of the moment thing. There was a, ma- a couple of men that were going to have a roping uh, down the country way and, and it was outdoor pen and and we had 70% chance of rain yesterday, so they didn't, they, they didn't get to have it there. They moved it up here to the church. And it was pretty neat because we had people from Louisiana, Dallas here roping. And we had a calf roping and a team roping. Uh, and I got to share the Word of God with them. And also, I'll tell you something else that I got to see. I got to see a man and a wife putting their faith into action, becoming to be doers of the Word. And it's pretty amazing, and I just love that about this church. That Man, we got people that want to be doers, and that's so awesome to me, and, and I thank you all for that. And one other thing, and then we'll get started. Uh, Mr. Randy Brown wanted me to mention the trail ride, and I don't have the dates, but he said, please remember the trail ride. So, Randy, I didn't have the dates, but I did get it mentioned. So, anyway, we're going to be in the book of Romans today, and, uh, and I just want to continue to give you tools to walk out your faith. And I think about tools, and I talked about tools in your toolbox last week, and, and if you're a mechanic and your tools are not worn, you're probably not doing your job. And it makes me think of a guy in here named Kelly Holt. He professes to be a horseshoer, but he never shows up on time. His tools are really sharp because he don't use them. See, but as Christians, and, and Paul gives us a lot of tools here we're going to look at to walk our faith out, to walk in tribulations. You know, just because we're Christians doesn't mean that our walk is always going to be smooth. You look at the Apostle Paul, he got jailed, beat up, shipwrecked. It wasn't a real smooth sailing ride, you might say. But you know, that's the way it is sometimes in our life. It's not always a bed of roses. A lot of times we look at the roses, but we don't look at the thorns. It wasn't real easy for Jesus because he had a, a crown of thorns on his head. You think that was an easy ride? Well, it wasn't. But Paul gives us some tools in Romans 5 that can help us walk out our faith. Faith triumphs in trouble. We're going to start at Romans chapter 5, and we're going to go down through verse 5. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we also have access by faith into grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured into, out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who He gave us. Being able to persevere through tribulations. Man, it's something that we've got to be able to do because like I said, we're not always going to have the best of times. And I'll just share a little short story and, I've, and everybody knows that my wife went through breast cancer a little over a year ago. But how do you get through that stuff? How do you persevere? And the, the cool thing about it is these things we're going to talk about, man, it showed up in our life. It was crazy because that year of my wife's breast cancer was the best years of our marriage so far. It's crazy when God is involved in your life and you start walking out the things, walking by faith, not by sight, how you can persevere through tribulations. And there's some of us sitting here today that, man, I'm a shipwrecked guy. I'm a shipwrecked wife. I'm a shipwrecked family. But see, we can persevere through these tribulations when we start seeking God with all our heart. Amen? All right. So the first thing we need to look at, it says right here, it says, therefore being justified by faith. We need to stop right there. Being justified, being made right with God. How do we do that? Receiving Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Then we're justified. We're okay with God. We're no longer an enemy to God. 
We're actually His children now. We're an heir to His throne because He gave that to us when we received Christ. We're justified by our faith in Jesus. So my question would be this, have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Because if you hadn't, you're not justified to God yet. You're still an enemy of God. So we're justified, justified by faith. In Galatians 2.16 it says, Knowing that man is not justified by works of the law, but by faith in Christ Jesus. Man, that's the only way that you're going to be justified to God is by Christ Jesus. There's no other way. It doesn't matter how much the works you do, if it's not about Christ Jesus in your life, it's for nothing. Amen? We keep rock and rolling now. There's some some things that you get when you receive Christ Jesus and you're justified. Here we go. The first one's right here. Peace with God. Peace with God. Man, if you look at our world today from 20... 20 to 2021, this day and time, if you look at our country, if you look at our world, there's not a lot of peace. Everybody's fighting one another. I don't know if y'all heard about this, about the highway patrol that was shot down at uh, Mahaya. It's just mind-boggling. And I have family members that are in the law enforcement. I don't know how they get up and go every day. And I thank them for doing that, or our soldiers that do that. But what about the peace? How do we get this peace? He gives it to us when we're justified through Christ Jesus. Peace, the absence of inner and outward conflict. And have have unity, have a wholeness. See, when there's no peace, there's conflict. When there is peace... There's unity. Do you have peace today? See, when me and Melody walked through this, this uh, time of our life, we always had peace in it, without a doubt. From the very first doctor that we met in Tyler to the last appointment we had last a couple weeks ago, there's still peace. There's always been the peace of God in there. And the neat thing about it is every doctor that we have met, I said, I said, hey, I know you're a doctor, and I understand that, and you're, you're in the healing business, but I know a doctor that's way better than you, and his name's Jesus. And the thing about it is, every doctor was willing to let me just, let's just stop for a moment, and let's just pray. I want to pray over the doctors first, and my wife. They were all great with it. Peace, man. There was always peace there. And Jesus said this in, in John 20, uh, 14, 27. He says, Peace I leave you. My peace is not... My peace I give to you, not as the world gives you. See, we can go through life and looking for peace, and, and a lot of times we look through for peace in a lot of ways. Uh, being funny. You know, a lot of times people try to be funny, and they're hiding a lot of things, and I'm not really talking about myself, but because I'm not really that funny. But we don't know about the things that are going on, and I'm not. So <laughs> y'all can laugh, I don't care. But see, sometimes we put things up in front of us to make people understand, to not see the inner side. And right now, you know, sometimes we need that inner peace. Sometimes we look for peace by going and buying stuff. My wife loves to get on Amazon, and we get packages all the time. What the world? We don't need that stuff. But now that we got a granddaughter, we get a lot more packages, but it's all going to Callie. So I guess that it brings her peace, and I'm good with it, and Callie's happy. So, But peace... Not the peace that the world gives us. See, we can buy things and that's worldly peace. But when the credit card bill comes in, it's not so peaceful at the house sometimes. See, so we can't be putting our peace in materialistic things is what he's telling us. And so many of us search out for peace in materialistic stuff. But Jesus said, the peace that I give you is not of this world. See, the only true peace, that inner peace that he's talking about, only comes through Christ Jesus. No other way. It doesn't matter how much stuff you buy, you cannot buy the peace of God. And so many people chase that peace with a credit card. It's not about the credit card, it's about your heart chasing Jesus. Once we start giving our life to Christ and following Jesus, man, that peace comes and I can understand that we can sit in the doctor's office and it looks like everything's falling apart. 
and we still have peace. We all need peace. That's just the first thing. We get three of them here. Get back up here so I can remember my notes. Man, I wish I had a better memory, or maybe I don't, but I wish my memory was better. So we get peace. Let me find it here. Okay. Peace through God. Peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have access by faith into grace. We have access by faith into grace. Access. You know, I've got a deal in my pocket that I carry around. I'm supposed to have it on a lanyard, but I don't like lanyards. But I have this card in my pocket. When I go to work, it's a card to get into our office. Some of you in here have one. But most of the people in this room do not have an access card into that state office down there. I have an access card. I can go anywhere I want to in that building because I have a card. See, once we put our faith in Christ, we have access by faith into grace. I don't know about y'all, but I need grace every day. Unmerited favor. See, when we have that access to that grace through Christ Jesus... Man, it all comes through Jesus, that access into grace, that unmerited favor. It says in uh, Hebrews 4, 16, it says, Let us therefore boldly come to the throne of grace. Man, every day we can come to that throne of grace, get that unmerited favor of God in your life every day. He says, come to it boldly. See, but... We just get it down where the rubber hits the road. See, he says, come to the throne room of of grace boldly. So many people go to to lunch. How many is going to lunch today somewhere else? Just raise your hand. Don't be shy. Get your hand up there. How many of you are going to pray before the meal gets there or when the meal gets there in your restaurant? Do you go to the throne of grace boldly? Are you bold enough to pray out in the public? See, Christ Jesus died on that cross in the public. It makes me want to go to Him boldly to the throne of grace, man. Where I can get healing, I can get forgiveness. See, we've got to come to the point in our life that we're bold about our faith in Jesus and quit being such wimpy Christians. Man, be bold about your faith. Don't be weak about it. Because we have grace, that unmerited favor. And I want to walk in His favor. And that grace that I so much need. See, we can say, oh, bless their heart. No, not bless their heart. They're not living in grace. They're living in mercy because God hadn't struck them down. Grace and mercy are totally two different things. Don't get them confused. Grace is unmerited favor. Mercy is this. You're not getting what you deserve by God. And a lot of times it might be wrath in our life. So we have access... By faith into grace, and he says, in which we stand. Do you stand in grace? Do we stand in it? And then he goes on and says, rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Hope. Man, we have peace, we have grace, and now he talks about hope. Do you have hope in your life? See, that only hope comes through Christ. Now may the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Man, once we start living our life out, we have hope through Christ. And He empowers us into that hope by the Holy Spirit. Be led by the Spirit. That's... Three tools that we can use to get through the tribulations, the trying times. Man, and if you just start walking in this, this peace and grace and hope, when the tough times come about, this is crazy right here, I've seen. Not only that we also, that we may, I'm just a second, knowing And not only that, but we also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation 
produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, hope. Glorying in tribulations. So I kind of looked up glorying. And one of the definitions I got, a divine quality. A divine quality. Did you know as we walk into tribulations, trying times in our life, that they can be a divine quality? We can have that divine quality. What is God doing in my life? How is He growing me? Why am I in this this desert spot of my life? Why am I in this wilderness? Maybe there's a divine quality there that He's trying to get across to you. I don't know what it is, but sometimes He'll put us in the wilderness for a growing situation. Sometimes He's trying to take things out of our life and put something into it, but the only way He can do it is because He's got to get you out into the wilderness. Look at King David. He was a young boy tending the sheep. God was preparing him. What is God preparing you for? What is that divine purpose he has for you? What is the divine quality? What is it in your life right now? So if we have that divine quality, we get this. We can glorify in these tribulations. And it says we get perseverance perseverance you know this is probably going to hurt people's feelings but I'm going to say it anyway I'm not really good about uh, perseverance is this just because it's not going your way it's still okay perseverance I'm not real big on everybody gets a trophy or a ribbon that's not right in my eyes it's only my eyes but I, I'm not good in that because it doesn't teach us anything sometimes perseverance is, is not getting your way Sometimes God has called me to a place and I really want to say, God, I really don't want to go there, but it really ain't about me no longer. It's about what He's called me to. And I've had numerous people ask me, are you going to be the next pastor here? And I'll just set the story straight right now. No, I'm not. And this is the reason why. God has not called me to be the pastor here. He's called me to be the plower. I'm just plowing the ground for when the next man's supposed to be here that God has called to be the pastor at Living for the Brand. Cowboy Church... They'll know him when they see him because all I'm doing is plowing a straight line. Turning over the soil. That's what I'm doing. Jesus had a forerunner. His name was John the Baptist. I'm just plowing. That's all I'm doing. Just plowing. What are you plowing in? I'm totally off my notes here. That's okay. (laughs) Totally off. Well, what's God plowing in your life? Where are you going with your life? Are you plowing? Are you being a forerunner for Jesus? Have you told somebody about Christ, what He's done in your life? Be plowing, man. Don't look back. He said if you put your hand to the plow and look back, you're not worthy of the kingdom of God. This is Jesus speaking. See, are you plowing? We need to be plowing in our life to get that perseverance because sometimes God calls us to persevere through the tough times so we can have growth in our life, maturity in our life, grow in Christ. It's not about getting your way all the time. Because if it was about getting your way, I'd probably be off fishing or going to a rope in or doing something else. But no, He's called me to be here today. I've got to persevere through it because I know He's growing me because I see it in myself. Man, it's about perseverance. In James 1.12 it says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he receives a crown of life of which the Lord has promised to him who love him. Sometimes perseverance can be just persevering. Temptations can make you go away from your perseverance. So the next thing perseverance does, it builds character. Character. A mental mental or moral quality in a person. Character. You know, it's all right to say one thing, and I mentioned this a while ago to somebody I was talking to. I want to be living out everything that I say to y'all. Everything that I speak, I want to be doing that in my life. I want to be living it out. I don't want to be a person that says one thing and does another. That's a lack of good character. A A good quality of character is this. When you tell somebody something, they do it, even though nobody's watching. Your character will shine through. A moral character. 
In Proverbs 10, 9, it says this. Whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but he who makes his way crooked will be found. What's your path like? Are you walking in integrity? Or do you got a crooked path? It's all about our character. See, when we have a good character, we can persevere through these tribulations. The other thing that I see is hope. See, once we have perseverance and we have a good character, it builds our hope. Man, hope in Christ. Hope how He can lead me through this storm. How He can get me on the other side of the desert in my life. How He can get me out of this wilderness place. See, because I put my hope in Christ and Christ alone, I can go forth. I can continue to plow forward. See, we need to be start taking our tools in our toolbox and start using them, sharpening them. Sharpening one another. See, we have this hope. For in this hope, we were saved. A hope that is not seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait patiently. Kind of like a little kid at Christmas. Boy, they hope they're going to get a new bike. They can't see it yet because mom and dad hadn't got it. Oh, Santa Claus. I don't know, whatever you tell them. But so... They're hoping for a new bicycle. They can't see it yet, but they go, they're hoping for it. I've never personally seen Jesus Christ with my own eyes, but I know He's here. I know He's there in my life. I can feel Him in my heart. He pushes me along when I need to step forward. He holds me still when I need to be still, and He tells me where to go. That's who I've put my hope in. My hope alone is only in Jesus. That's how I can get through the tribulations. That's how me and Melody push forward through all this cancer stuff. In James 1, 2, 2 through 4, it says, My brethren, count it pure joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. And let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, not lacking nothing. He's telling us, as we, James, as we go through all this stuff, God's just trying to make us become mature Christians. And the thing about it is, is He's going to give us all the tools in our toolbox to be able to become mature Christians. He's not going to abandon us. He says He'll never leave us or forsake us. He just wants us to get mature. Keep walking forward. In verse 5 it says, Now hope does not disappoint. Hope does not disappoint. My question to you is, is where have you put your hope? If you're disappointed here today because you uh, put your hope in something that's not helping you, I would ask you, where have you put your hope? Have you put your hope in Jesus? See, because He says He does not disappoint. I've never done anything for Christ that made me ashamed of myself. I've done a lot of stuff in my fleshly nature that I am ashamed of. See, but once you start putting your faith in Christ and Christ alone, He says, you will not be put to shame. Where's your hope? Man, if you've got shame in your life, maybe you need to draw closer to Christ. See, but He's never going to make me be disappointed. I've never been disappointed in the things that I've done for Christ because He always leads me and directs me. Since now hope does not disappoint because of the love of God that has been poured into your heart by the Holy Spirit in whom you were in whom was given to us. It says it was poured. Because of the love of God that has been poured. I'm thinking about pouring something. I'm thinking about taking a vase and pouring it. And it makes me think about when I grew up out in the panhandle, we had these huge irrigation wells. And when they started watering, whether it was corn, cotton, whatever soybeans, sweet potatoes. And sweet potatoes was the craziest. 
Because once they started that irrigation motor up and started running that circle pivot, it never shut off. They run it 24 hours a day until it was time to harvest the crop. And all that water that came out, it, I mean, it was like an 8-inch pipe, a full bore of water. And if you had the valve shut off, when that water hit the top of that pipe, it would blow that pipe apart. It was crazy how much water. And they pumped that water in them wells day after day nonstop. See, but the love of God that has been poured out into our hearts, just like them wells in the panhandle, they don't run them that way no more because the water table has dropped so low, there's no more water. But see, the love of God that's been poured into our heart, it's endless. There's no end to the love of God that He's poured into each one of us through the Holy Spirit. He's poured it into us. You've got to get this because that's the only way that we're going to get through our life here on earth is because of the love of God that's poured out in us day after day after day, and it's endless. You've got to get it. His love is endless for us. He loved us so much that He sent His Son to die for us. That's an endless love. That's an endless pouring of the Holy Spirit into our lives. Man, if we're going to get through this, this time on earth, because this is really not our home, if we're in Christ Jesus, He's called us heavenward. This is not my home. But he's, me, he's given me tools to get through this place, this wilderness times that we come into, because of His love. He can't tell me that He loves me and abandons me. That's not love. He's never abandoned me. Until we understand that He has a future for us and a hope, and that hope's through Christ Jesus, and it's an endless pouring of love. And He says it's, it's just endless. Man, it's just mind-boggling to me. When I, the more I study, the more I see what God's done in my life and what He wants for me and He wants for you. It's unbelievable. And it's like, have you ever seen a kid in a candy store? And they don't do this much anymore, but when me and Melody, we lived in Oregon for a while, and you'd go to this grocery store, and they would just have these barrels of candy. And, I mean, you'd have a scoop. You could just fill up the sack, man. It, just, just put it in there. And that's the way it is with God's love. He just wants you to keep filling up, filling up. And he says that we've, he's poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who is given to us. Into our hearts. It's a heart thing. So the question is this. Can you persevere without Christ? I know you can. Because it's a hopeless life without Christ Jesus. And he says that he puts the Holy Spirit in us as a deposit guarantee. Once you receive him, it's a guarantee. What's it guaranteeing? You have eternal life. We're going to talk about it next week on Easter Sunday. The greatest day that's ever been. And the reason I say that is He has arisen. And we have that hope in Jesus. The thing about it is, is do we open up our toolbox? Do we oh, And here's our toolbox. I'm talking about a toolbox. It's His Holy Word. Everything that we need to walk through this life here on earth is in His Holy Word. Trouble in life? Open up your toolbox, your holy word. He'll tell you how to get through it. But see, we have to come to the point that we open up his word every day. It's amazing. Amazing grace is right there in his word. Amen? Amen. All right. Wayne, if you all go ahead and come on up. I'm going to close today. Youth, if you need to uh, want to go and you can't go, come find me or Colleen. We'll talk it over with you. Next Sunday, don't forget about sunrise service. We're going to be out there in the arena. It's going to be so much fun to be outside. Brother Trey, if you want to come on up. Where's he at? Oh, there he is. I've seen over here there's a lot of beards over there. Didn't quite notice you. But if y'all would, please go ahead and stand. We'll close. Are you here today? Can you say that you can triumph through tribulation? Can you persevere through the tough times? Do you have that peace? Are you walking in grace? 
Do you have hope? He's here today. If you don't have any of that, He's here today. Me or Trey, either one would love to share a clear plan of salvation, how God has a plan for you and you give you eternal life. Only comes through Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this day, Father. I pray for the person here today that has no hope. They haven't put their hope in Christ. I pray today that they would say, Lord, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior, and that Savior is Jesus Christ. He died on that cross for me, and He arose on the third day to give me that living hope. I pray for the person that's just struggling today, Father, that they would come to You and open their Word and see all the tools, all the love that You've done poured out for them. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.